Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. And welcome to another DeBrown Consulting webinar series. This is our webinar series on Excel and Power BI. We do this every third Thursday of the month from 9 a.m. to like 9.45 a.m. And today we're going to be talking about top 10 Power BI updates in 2019. Quite a lot of updates in 2019. We're just trying to, so it's kind of difficult for us to go through and pick 10. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Top 10 Power BI updates in 2019. So let's get started. Let's jump right into it. And just a quick intro to me. I am David Brown. I'm the managing partner of D Brown Consulting. I'm also an international consultant to the World Bank and a Microsoft MVP on data analytics. So on the data platform. So this is this is me. You can see my handle. You can follow me on Twitter, D Brown Analyst, and you have all my videos on YouTube. You can see that link there. So join me, and let's just jump straight into it. Those updates for 2019. Well, you can also join our Power BI user group because we have quite a lot of resources online. If you go to meetup.com, if you go to meetup.com, you can look at look us up as Nigeria Modern Excel and Power BI user group. That's on meetup.com, right? We also have the financial modeling meetup group. So if you just go to meetup.com, you can also just look for financial modeling. So here we're more than 4,000 members now and it's growing and we do meetups. We also have, we're also managing the Nigeria Modern Excel and Power BI user group on the Power BI org or the Power BI user groups on pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. So if you go www.pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos and that's where you get us. So that is the Nigeria Modern Excel and Power BI user group. Great. Just a quick word about our sponsors. So we have D Brown Consulting sponsoring this webinar. And of course, this is the Power BI user group, Power BI user group webinar. And as I said, it's every third third Thursday of the month. And we also actually have a live meetup every third Saturday of the month. Yes, yeah? so a live meetup, different venues and stuff. I'll probably show you the link at the end of the webinar. You can actually type in the chat and then we'll show you the link as well. We'll just share that link with you. Great. So, jumping straight in, top 10 Power BI updates in 2019. As I said, it was quite challenging to decide which top 10 was going to be the top 10. So, we decided we're going to go every single month of updates. So, in January, typically they don't do any updates in January and uh, they start the update process in February. So, February, let's jump straight in there. So, this was February 2019. So this was what um, the updates that they had in February 2019. So reporting the updates to the new filter pane. So the filter pane, there were some really interesting updates, more filter pane formatting and stuff like that. Very good updates to the filter pane. Cross-highlighting in single points in line charts. Cross-highlighting to us, we think that was kind of the best we saw in February, so I'm going to quickly highlight that. There was also word wrap on titles, update default visual interaction to cross filter, rounded corners for visual borders. That was very nice. I always like rounded corners. Analytics, the key influential visual was actually released. That could have been the best, but I'm going to leave that and just give you a sneak peek. Actually, key influencer visual is just something else. It's an AI visual. Insight questions with Q&A, another AI visual. Auto-generated suggestion questions in Q&A Explorer. Too many wonderful things in, in, in February. I think they just left all sorts of stuff to put in in February. That was to start the year off with a bang kind of stuff. So custom visuals, there were some custom visuals released. Custom visuals, quite a lot of custom visuals. And then you had the data connectors. Every single month there are lots of data connectors. So SurveyMonkey is one big one that was added in February 2019. So quite a lot of updates in, in, in February. So what did we pick? So in that February we picked cross-highlighting in a single 
point in a line chart. What do we mean by that? Cross highlighting a single point in a line chart. So that's what we picked for February. And here it is. So if you have a line chart, just p t k create a typical line chart. Yeah, just create a typical line chart. And what that means is if you look at this dot, we can now click on that dot and it cross highlights everything. So for this particular dot in March, where the revenue was about 8.4 billion, you can cross highlight just that dot and it's like clicking March. So you don't need to ha have a visual. You don't need to have January to December as a slicer. You could actually go into the chart and kind of slice by point point by point and it's going to slice by month of course if you click it again it just goes off you click it once it goes on click it again and then of course you could have your um, different visuals that you put on the slicer so you, you have your tool tips so those tool tips if I come to this visualization here if I click on this visual and then I click on here you'd see tool tips tool tips is on and tool tips will be able to show that tip of um, revenue sum right so you could click here and just click up here and you have the visuals. You can drop more things into this uh, tooltip um, section and then you could have more context for various tools, right? Various visuals. Very cool. Very cool stuff. So that was February. That's our pick for February. What about March? So in March, March 2019, another set of updates. We had a single select slicer, single select slicer. You had heat map supports for Bing maps. You have cross highlighting, sm small filter pane improvements, and then analytics, Q&A recommendations for improving results. Show dates as a hierarchy now generally available. They kind of released that the year before, but it was in beta form. So quite a lot of updates, right? PDP in PDF connector now supporting tables spanning multiple pages. This is this was big. This was really big, but we had to pick one, right? So PDF connector, I mean, you could you could use PDFs, data and PDFs, and you could use Power BI to connect to those data. It's just really wonderful stuff in March. So what did we pick for March? What did we pick? We picked single select slicer, right? Single select slicer. Yes, and oh, what does that mean? What does single select slicer mean? So typically, when you have a slicer here, look at this. You can click on north northwest, right? And you see everything kind of filtered to northwest. And here, you could do multi-select. You could click, hold your control key, and click to do multi-select. So this is like a multi-select thing. But sometimes you don't want your users to have that option at all. You just want them to do single select. So what you do, if I click on this visual, which is a simple, typical uh, slicer visual, I'll come in here, I'll come into this, um, come into the formatting. Then under selection controls, they added this button here called single select. So this single select here, if you click on this single select, you'll see that we can now just click one at a time, just a single select, right? So if I remove that single select, then you could do your multi-select. And in the multi-select, actually, here you have multi-select with control. You know, I, I held the control key. You can actually switch that off. So they can't do multi-select with control is the tick. So you just tick, tick, tick for multi-select, which kind of is better instead of control, right? So you could use control or not control. Show select all option. So if I click on that select all option, you have that select all option. I click select all, right? Or not. So just a bit like Excel, isn't it? So I kind of like the single select. So single select, this just makes, kind of forces you to only select one at a time. So it depends on how you want to do your reports. It just gives us various options for our slicer. So this slicer, you could decide a single select, multi-select, multi-select with control, multi-select with no control, all sorts of stuff. Really good stuff. So that was our pick for March. Let's see, what did April have to offer? So April, a lot, a lot of stuff on April. This analytics, you have drilled through across reports. This was really good. But you have key influencer visual now supporting continuous analysis for numeric targets. Key influencer, again, is a huge visual. It's another AI visual. Quite a lot of stuff here. Filter pane was a big one. Filter pane improvements. So lots and lots of improvements on filter pane. We just have to give it to filter pane. Filter pane was just superb. Filter pane improvements. So if I go to the April get to April, let's say, I'm going to pick, um, okay, let's see, what was this? This is a renegade, some renegade visual here. So let me just delete that, okay? So if I come into April, supporting the filters. So you have filter pane. What was that? They, they actually improved the, if I come to view here, you can't see the filter pane here, I have to go to view. 
and then I can click on this filter pane. So quite a lot of improvements to the filter pane in, in that month. Uh, let's let's recap. So what were the improvements? They had um, filter pane improvements included support for full filter pane editing. You had ability to rename filters, filter pane scales with the report page, restrict, ab restrict ability to change filter types, improve filter pane accessibility. So those were all the improvements. So if you look at the filter pane here, we could drag this as filter on this page, filter on all pages, you could drag stuff there. So I could say, okay, come, I want to filter. Right now I have my regions here. This is my regions. I could decide, you know what, let's bring regions in. If I take my store, D store, I'm going to pick regions and drop it in here. So filter this page by region. Click there. So filter this page by region. If I pick North Central, you'll see that it filters the report. So it's just North Central here. I can so I can decide, you know what, I'm gonna pick this North Central and I'm gonna lock it. Can you see that? I'm gonna lock it here. So I'm locking it and that way if I click this and I hide my filters, so I've kind of locked it in and that's just North Central. Nothing anyone can do about it, right? So if I if I come back, how do I get my filter back? You come into view and you pick the filter, then you come here and I can unlock it but if you click on this uh, let's say north and north central and lock or can just unlock it to allow people to edit right basic filters advanced filters and the other thing I can see filter on all pages I can decide you know I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it here let me just kind of um, bring it take it out and let's come and take uh, maybe let's say model let's take model name and put it here so what this means is that this filter is on all pages. So that means every single page here is going to be affected by this, almost like a universal uh, filter, right? So if I click on ad hoc services, so if I go to another sheet maybe or another page, or I call it sheet, I like Excel. So another page, let's say February, um, ad hoc services. So it's technically filtered by ad hoc services, right? That's what it means is ad hoc services. Yeah, look at that. So this ad hoc services affects every single page. So once you click it, it just affects every page. And that's that's filter. So quite a lot of updates for filter. This filter pane in editing and improvements were really good in April. So that's what wins our our um, best update for April. Great. So what about May? So what happened in May? So what do you guys think of the update so far? Which do you prefer? Type it in the chat. Type it in the chat. Let me recap. So we had in February, the February update was cross highlighting on a single point, single point cross highlighting, right? That means I can go to my chart and pick a single point and it will kind of cross highlight the entire report, right? Cross highlight the entire report. Really cool. So that was February. March, we saw that we picked single select slicer, right? Single select slicer being that you could come here and change your slicer from what it was multi-select before. You come in here, you click on selection control, and then you switch on single select. Yeah, this was single select that they added in there, right? Previously, it was multi-select, and I can say multi-select with control. I hold my control key. So it depends on your users, what your users want, right? So which do you prefer of the two? So I've just shown you this two, um, which you have the point on your line chart that you can select or the single point on your slicer that you can select or in April the big improvements to the filter pane. Out of these three type in the chat which you think works best or which, which you think was the best. I think the filter, the improvements to filter were really really cool. Alright so that's April. That's like technically first quarter or this one month after, after the first quarter, the first three months. So let's see what happened in May. What happened in May? So in May, this is the things that happened. We had performance analyzer pain. Now this is big, performance analyzer. Even though we didn't pick it, I think it's worth a mention. Performance analyzer pain was huge. This is it here. If I go to view, 
Now, if I click this drop down here, this is how it used to look before. You, you also, these are improvements to the UI. So if I click on the performance analyzer, I know it wasn't chosen. It's not part of our analysis, but you could click on start recording and then analyze how, what the, what's the performance of Power BI, right? What's the performance? How well is, is it doing what it should be doing, right? How well is it running this visual? So you see, all this analysis on how quickly these visuals ran, right? You click on text box, you see, okay, this visual, how it ran, it ran pretty well. Let's see, text box doesn't have any any DAX. If I click on this one, right? If I click on this, let's see how this um, uh, analyze, let's check uh, line chart. So if I click on this line chart, you can see it has some DAX. The DAX took 29 milliseconds, ooh, very tiny. Yeah. If I click on the copy query, I'll be able to copy whatever the DAX query is and go paste it somewhere and check it out. This is cool. This is big. Performance Analyzer. Well, we didn't pick it. We had to vote, right? So we didn't really pick it, Performance Analyzer, but please check it out. So what did we pick? What did we pick? So that was our May, right? What did we pick for the May updates? Let me close Performance Analyzer, minimize this, and minimize this. So these were all the updates. I love Performance Analyzer. It's extremely good when you're deploying a Power BI, you're doing a deployment, a Power BI deployment. Yeah, it's, it really shows you what is making things slow. How do we improve our DAX? Right, what about the filter pane improvements? Sorting filter cards, theme support, so continuous improvements in filter panes. Table and matrix keyboard navigation, line data label, position control, KPI visual indicator, text size control, analytics key influencer visual improvements these were really big improvements binning support formatting options mobile support then modeling updates to the all selected dax function i think we had to update certain things that probably were not working too well visualizations always good new and better and better visualizations and data connections more data connect connectors so out of here we chose the key influencer visual so we chose the key influencer visual and that was our main top visual for that month key influencer visual formatting options so if i go to may demo what is the key influencer visual well let's see what is influencing certain metrics in your data key influencer is actually an ai visual this is it here as you look at it here key influencer if i click on it so this is key influencer visual let me just make it big here so this does a lot of regression right if you like statistics you will love this because it goes through all your data and tries to explain things very important visual so if i come let's bring in some data let's click on this let's say um, what i want to analyze let's say i'm analyzing budget variance right budget variance so here i just selected a, a a metric I just selected yeah, a metric called budget variance so see what the key influencer visual did I just take it says what influences budget variance to increase or decrease right what influences budget variance to increase or decrease so let me choose uh, decrease so what influences budget variance to decrease great and of course there's no data here so let's pick some things let's pick something let's say what influences to increase for let's put some dates let's put large data let's say dates where's the date i don't want to group this date so i'm just showing date itself just the date um let's say store let's say region let's say state let's say so you see right now it's not analyzing anything because there's not enough data you need a lot of data for it to analyze i'm going to put store name as well so it's, it's it's gathering all the data and just like statistics you need a critical mass of data for it to really do some analysis that makes sense so i put region state and store name let me add some more data let's say uh, model name right okay that seems to be enough for now good so you see so i've analyzed i've added i want to know what influences budget variance to decrease yeah, so budget variance to decrease, so budget and actual, budget variance to decrease from region, state, store, and model. And what did it come up with? It says, um, when the average of budget variance decreases by 7.59, well, when the model name is general repairs, okay? So, when the model name is general repairs, 
the average of budget variance decreases by 7.59. So just model. So this this is general repair. So general repair seems to be uh, where the major increase decreases in in budget variances are coming from. All right, all right. It's interesting. So if I click this, then you see further analysis here. Budget variances. So it, it breaks it down into bins. So what the updates they did is binning things. They, they kind of increased or improved the way they could bin things. Okay. If I click on only show values that are influencers, so these are the main influencers: general repairs, motherboards, printer repairs, and this. And yeah. So we could go a step further and go to top segments. What are the top segments that are real influencers? So you have segment one, you have the average of budget variance in the population count. So 98.53% on the segment one. If I click in segment one, it's all to see what that's all about. So you can now see some more analysis about segment one and the overall performance. And segment one contains 124 data points, 13.9% of the entire data. In segment one, the average budget variance is 98.53% negative. This is 6.54% units lower than the overall average variance. Okay, so if it's what, when a budget variance more likely to be low, what about high? When is budget variance more likely to be high? Right, let's see that. So it's running the analysis, going to and doing the same regression again, doing it all from scratch again. And this doesn't look too interesting. Let's go back to Key Influencer. And I say, okay, what? Influences budget variance to increase. Let's say decrease, right? That influences it to decrease. Let's see what influences it to decrease. Quite a lot more things. And he sees analyzing there. So we could you could be on this for all all day. I mean, there's so much interesting stuff going on there. We don't have that much time, so let's move on. So that was our May update, right? Our May update. So the May update, just to recap, if I click on this, hopefully it comes up. It's coming up. Don't crash on me, please. Right. This is quite a heavy file, so it's kind of dragging. Okay, so those are your performance analyzer. And what we picked was the uh, key influencer visual improvements, right? That was our May. That was our May updates. So what about June? What's happened in June? Let's quickly jump into June. June, June updates. What can, what can we say about June? So June, formatting options. So if I go to May, Demo, what is the key influencer visual? Well, let's see. What is influencing certain metrics in your data? Key influencer is actually an AI visual. This is it here. As you look at it here, key influencer. If I click on it, so this is key influencer visual. Let me just make it big here. So this does a lot of regression, right? If you like statistics, you will love this because it goes through all your data and tries to explain things very important visual so if i come let's bring in some data let's click on this let's say um, what i want to analyze let's say i'm analyzing budget variance right budget variance so here i just selected a, a, a metric i just selected yeah, a metric called budget variance so see what the key influencer visual did i just take it says what influences budget variance to increase or decrease right what influences budget variance to increase or decrease? So let me choose uh, decrease. So what influences budget variance to decrease? Great. And of course, there's no data here. So let's pick some things. Let's pick something. Let's say what influences to increase for, let's put some dates. Let's put large data. Let's say dates. Where is it? Dates. I don't want to group these dates. So I'm just showing date itself, just the date. Um, let's say store. Let's say region let's say state let's say so you see right now it's not analyzing anything because there's not enough data you need a lot of data for it to analyze i'm going to put store name as well so it's it's, it's gathering all the data and just like statistics you need a critical mass of data for it to really do some analysis that makes sense so i put region state and store name let me add some more data let's say uh model name right okay that seems to be enough for now good so you see so i've analyzed i've added i want to know what influences budget variance to decrease yeah so budget variance to decrease so budget and actual budget variance to decrease from region state store and model and what did it come up with it says um when the average of budget variance decreases by 
7.59. Well, when the model name is general repairs, okay? So when the model name is general repairs, the average of budget variance decreases by 7.59. So just model, so this this is general repair. So general repair seems to be uh, where the major increase decreases in, in budget variances are coming from. All right? All right? It's interesting. So if I click this, then you see further analysis here, budget variances. So it, it breaks it down into bin. So what the updates they did is binning things. So they, they kind of increased or improved the way they could bin things. Okay. If I click on only show values that are influencers, so these are the main influencers, general repairs, motherboards, printer repairs, and this. And yeah, so we could go a step further and go to top segments. What are the top segments that are real influencers? So you have segment one, you have the average of budget variance in the population count. So 98.53% on the segment one. If I click in segment one, it's helps to see what that's all about. So you can now see some more analysis about segment one and the overall performance. And segment one contains 124 data points, 13.9% of the entire data. In segment one, the average budget variance is 98.53% negative. This is 6.54% units lower than the overall average variance. Okay, so if it's what, when a budget variance more likely to be low, what about high? When is the budget variance more likely to be high? Right, let's see that. So it's running the analysis, going to and doing the same regression again, doing it all from scratch again. And this doesn't look too interesting. Let's go back to Key Influencer. And I say, okay, what? Influences budget variance to increase. Let's say decrease, right? Let's influence it to decrease. Let's see what influences it to decrease. Quite a lot more things. And he sees analyzing there. So we could you could be on this for all all day. I mean, there's so much interesting stuff going on there. We don't have that much time, so let's move on. So that was our May update, right? Our May update. So the May update, just to recap, if I click on this, hopefully it comes up. It's coming up. Don't crash on me, please. Right. This is quite a heavy file, so it's kind of dragging. Okay, so those are your performance analyzer. And what we picked was the uh, key influencer visual improvements, right? That was our May. That was our May updates. So what about June? What's happened in June? Let's quickly jump into June. June, June updates. What can, what can we say about June? So June, click on... Oops, oops, oops. Hopefully come up, come up, come up, come up. Oh, I'm jumping straight to July. Okay, I guess we didn't. We jumped June. We skipped June. Let's just skip June. Not much time. So July, what happened here? Icon sets for table and matrix. Percentage support for conditional formatting by rules. New filter pane is not generally available. The filter pane I showed you the other time. That was the beta. Analytics. Count for key influencer visual improvements there are lots of improvements so what did we pick or what was our pick for july we picked data colors support when using play axis on scatterplot now there was just i think a small snag when it came to scatterplots but scatterplots are one of our most favorite or favorite visuals it's really really super visual because it kind of tells a story what a scatterplot does is you have two variables and you're trying to say one variable explains another variable, right? So for example, revenue and transactions is a classic one. You have revenue to the left here and then you have transactions here. So you have transactions, you have revenue, right? And we're saying as revenue goes up, we're hoping that transaction goes up. So if you look at this visual here, this is northeast. I had to hover over these things to see what they were. So this is northeast and it had 34 transactions and 65 million in sales. So if I play my axis, you could see them moving. Pretty nice, right? I pause. But the support, what changed really I think is the legend. So we, we had a legend. I mean, you could switch on the legend and you see the legend come up here, which um, we didn't have we couldn't switch off or on or whatever the legend. Now I can switch it on and off, and that's it here up there. So that was the improvement for the scatter plot. And scatter plot is a really favorite visual of ours, so that was really nice. So that was the updates for July. That's our pick. August. What happened in August? So August, we had not too much updates. We had grouping visuals, filter pane and migration, icon style picker for icon conditional formatting. Conditional formatting 
warnings. And then key influencer again had measure support, general availability, quite a few things here. So what was our pick? Pick was grouping visuals. So grouping visuals, I'll show you another visual to see how we group visuals, right? So grouping visuals, I'll just come to this visual here. And if I click this visual and I clip this visual, let's assume I had so many more visuals and I just want to align them and take them, work on them at the same time. You could click this, hold your control and click this and right click. Then you see group and you group. Now they are one visual and I can kind of drag all of them at the same time. See that? I can just click and drag. Yeah. I can drag them all together. Right. And that's grouping visuals. Pretty cool. And you can always ungroup as well. Just right click, group, ungroup. Right. So that was good, especially if you have so many visuals to manage and you need to kind of align them and do all of them at the same time. So that was grouping visuals. So, yeah, that was our pick for August. And let's move on to yeah so what's the next one september so quite a few more um improvements color and text classes in themes new default themes i think this this was big and in fact that was our pick new default themes although they had a new function a new dax function in september which is remove filters and convert for the DAX lovers, this was really, really good. You had to really know more complex DAX computation or create a, how will I call it, create, create, create lots of functions together to be able to do this effect. But this was, this, this kind of improved your DAX writing skills, right? New filters to kind of help you out, remove filters and convert. Data preparation, copy to clipboard from data profiling, also pretty good. You can check that out online. Direct query support generally available, also very good. Power App Visual, now generally available. That's super, Power Apps. We're going to be doing quite a lot of Power Apps in our meetups this year. So watch out, lots of Power Apps in our meetups this year and Power Automate. So what did we pick? We picked new default themes, new default themes, because it's so much easier to use new default themes. So that was our pick. New default themes, okay, and on pin visuals. What does that mean, on pin visuals? Okay. So new default themes, you can get that right here in view. If you go to view up here, see view, you click here, and these are the new default visuals. I can click on one of the themes, and it kind of updates your themes. You click on themes. If I had many colors, you would have seen the effect. I don't really have bars with colors. You would have seen that effect there. So these are your new default themes. And of course, you have your browse Browse for themes, if you can go online and browse for themes, or I, I, I can pick themes here, uh, but really, let's leave that. And yeah, you could do, if you know JSON, you could, you could get export your theme, you could, how to create themes, I can click on that, you'll see how to create themes, it just pop up a, a video online for you to uh, see, or it's actually documentation online from Microsoft on how you actually um, report or manage themes. So that documentation, let me just pop it here for you to have a look. So this is it. Once you click that, this is how different documentation on using themes. If you go to docs.microsoft.com, you'll be able to go there or just click it directly and you see, read all about it and see how do you create your own nice, wonderful themes to make things easier, right? Very cool. Very, very cool. It's quite a long documentation, but it's worth reading. Because once you create a theme, you manage it, all your reports will be standard, beautiful, and that you learn a little bit of JSON because you need that code, but there's lots of templates for you to use here. So read it. How did I get here? Let me remind you. I went to down here for the View, View tab, clicked here. The Under View tab, I clicked on the drop down for themes. Hold on a second. The system seems to be misbehaving. This tool is quite heavy. Slow down, guys. Slow down. Good. All right. There we go. It's still there. Okay, good. So here, how to create themes. That's what you click. Once you click that, it's going to open the Microsoft documentation on creating themes. And um, that's how you get there. Great. So that was for September themes. Then what about on pin in visuals? What do we mean by that? If I go to visualization, right, these are your standard visuals. And many at times people... You don't use certain visuals like this pie chart. This pie chart is terrible. Don't use pie charts. Pie charts, you can always get a better chart than a pie chart. So 
right click this pie chart and say hey i'm unpinning this visual i don't want it anymore so it's going to unpin this it's going to remove pie chart from here and it's just going to add to almost like a custom visual look at the warning it says you're about to remove this visual from the visualization pane to use this visual in the future you'll need to restore default visuals so click ok and guess what pie chart is going to leave here and it's going to join this guy here just watch hopefully move on move move yeah, it's taking a while this pie chart doesn't want to move just give it a few seconds pie chart off you go ah, pie chart is pretty stubborn you see you unpin the visual and the guy refuses to go click OK he's supposed to move out and now he moves out. Can you see him there? <laughs> so now he moves out. Look at the pie chart there. So you could right click and right click and unpin all the visuals you really don't want to use or you don't use regularly. So you kind of declutter this place, right? And of course, you still have your custom visuals. So your custom visuals, you could click here and then pick custom visuals that come down here, right? So that's unpinning visuals, really good. But if you want to get your pie chart back, you need to click on these three dots here and then say restore default restore default visuals right delete custom visuals import custom visuals import from file all sorts of stuff perfect so that was your september pick from us what about october what do they have for us in october what do they have from microsoft for power bi so another long list of updates on reporting they had automatic page refresh for direct query preview really nice this is on a preview, it's not generally available as at then. The new QA visual, this was really big. The new QA visual. Improved user experience for QA, a lot of stuff on QA. Natural language improvements for QA, QA tooling, support for SSES and Azure AS, including RLS. This QA, I mean, you could just see there's so much stuff on QA. Power Apps Visual is now included by default. New XVis Visual, that's XVis. Our friends from XVis, but well, guess what? Of course, we had to pick Q&A. I mean, Q&A was just uh, a huge improvement. So the new Q&A visual was 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 it, right? So what were the improvements? Quite a lot. You could could read about it. But how do you use Q&A? You just go to your page and double click. You double click, the Q&A visual will appear, and that's it coming up. Yeah, Q&A. So I can make this a bit bigger so we can see this, right? So this is your Q&A. Right, so it kind of suggests things for you based on your data. It's giving you suggestions on how you can write your Q and A, and yeah, so you just just write. So let's take one of the suggestions. Uh, let's just do ours, right? What is sales by region, right? By region for which year is that? Well, you can see it's giving me various states. Let's say. Uh, 20. I don't know what data this is. 2014. You have data for 2014. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's my Q and A. So what is sales by region 2014? Um, let me say as a pie chart. I don't like pie charts, but let's just say pie chart. Right? No. Did I remove pie chart? Can you see that? I've removed pie chart, so it's not there anymore. So no pie charts for me, which is good. So as a map, can you do region by map? But regions, I'm not too sure if we do a map. Let's see, map, let's say matrix. Matrix visual is nice. Well, it did, actually, it did by map, but let's go to matrix. Choose matrix. So it's, it's sleeker, better, nicer. This is it. So this is, this is your visual. Yeah, not bad at all. All right, so that's the new Q&A visual. You could also click on this um, cog for settings for the Q&A visual and then see lots more things, review questions. You want to review questions. People have asked fixed and fixed misunderstandings. So when you're reviewing, you're trying to see, okay, someone asked a question, they gave a different answer. How do we improve that? You want to teach the machine learning algorithm. You want to keep teaching it to understand what you, what's best, what are the things that you think are best, understanding you better as a person or a group of people and the terms that people use. You're teaching Q&A, right? Managing, managing terms. Manage the terms and definitions you've 
taught Q and A, right? And help. So you could click on this, and it basically goes online, goes to the documentation online and YouTube, and plays a video to kind of help you out on understanding how to use these things. So it's really, really good stuff. Excellent stuff, right? So let me uh, close that. Great. So. That was your Q&A. Review questions, teach Q&A, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. And then, of course, if you like the visual, if I close this, you can always pin the visual, right? You like this visual, you could always click on this and say, turn the Q&A result into a standard visual. Once you click it, this becomes a standard visual. You put it somewhere else and you can come into your blank space and double click again to do a new Q&A. Right, I just double click and I do my new Q and A, and we go go on. Right, ask another question, and then uh, you'll be able to create your own custom visual. I mean, create a beautiful visual with another Q and A. Right. So uh, let me see. I, I need a sales by model. All right. Okay, I didn't spell that well. Sales, sales. Okay, I know sales by model. It's not bad. I know sales by model. Right, and I like this one as well. So let's go. And also it's my model. And let me reduce the size of this. So you just play around with your Q and A. I like this. I pin it, and and you just go ahead, and that's it. So Q and A, big improvements for Q and A in October. What about November? So November, we had modern ribbon preview. So November big thing was the modern ribbon, but there were kind of more big things. You had the decomposition tree visual as well as a preview. Then conditional formatting, button formatting, conditional format, button formatting, visualizations, new interesting visuals, zoom chart, drill down, waterfall charts, and stuff. But this, this, this two right were super big. Modern ribbon preview. That's what you're looking at right now. This is the modern visual, uh, modern ribbon. Everything here that is the modern ribbon. Big, big improvements. I can minimize the ribbon now, and then I could up to go to view and see the filter. See, I can activate the filter pane. I can deactivate the filter pane, selection pane, performance analyzer, under view, help, had so many more things. So I can kind of minimize this. So this was a big, big improvement. I mean, the UI is getting better and better. Text box, ask a question, buttons, shapes, images, everything that you insert. So what they're really trying to do, right, is almost make it look like um, Excel, PowerPoint, and, and Office, right? They're making it almost look like Office. Eventually, I can predict this for you. Under Home, you're going to see some formatting stuff. So if you want to format, you click on something, you just be able to format it almost like Office right now. So it's getting better and better. The UI, they're doing a lot of work on the UI, right? So that was um, really uh, just the cut out of the bag. The November pick for us was the Modern Ribbon, for sure. The Modern Ribbon, super excellent. And that's what you have up here, right? The Modern Ribbon makes it easier. It's more intuitive. And it just looks better and more professional. The, the product is getting mature. Really nice. So what about December, our last one? What about December? What was there in December? Again, quite a lot of stuff in December, customizing current theme, export current theme, setting table columns or matrix value to a custom URL, KPIs, new decomposition tree formatting and stuff. But really, what we will pick, I mean, there was a new function to quarter. I haven't even tried. I wouldn't use that. Hmm, I need to check that out. Loads more analytics inside and uh, lots of stuff, lots of interesting stuff. So. Reporting, what did we pick? It has to be the decomposition tree. So the decomposition tree was really something. What, what do we mean by the decomposition tree? So let me do a quick demo. So here's the decomposition tree. This is how it looks. It looks like a tree, branches out and stuff. So why do you pick it? It's another of their AI visuals, right? Any visual you see with this kind of tiny bulb is an AI visual. So lots of AI. So if I click on the decomposition tree, this is it here. Right? Any one of you has used this in PowerPoint. PowerPoint, there is this um, transition called morph. Now that's some super transition, and that is a bit a bit morphy like morph, right? So this is your decomposition tree. Um, let's do some analysis. Let's say we want to decompose what? Let's pick a metric. Let's pick a metric. Let's say um, hmm, lots of metrics. Lots of metrics. Revenue or transactions 
distinct count annual sales let's just say annual sales right so annual sales uh, oh what did I pick this is not decomposition tree this is key influencer let's go is this the decomposition tree here decomposition tree yep so I'm analyzing annual sales here yeah, look at it so this is annual sales how are we gonna break annual sales let's break it by categories right so you have a metric first and then you want to break it reported by hierarchy so let's pick a region first so if I pick region so this is region I just selected region so if you click on this plus sign it's going to give us the composition of a region right let's click double click 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 out uh oh let me slow down click yeah there we go so northeast southeast southwest and everything then let me bring in a region let's say state right so pick state so if I pick state and I pick this click on this so by saying that we have annual sales for northeast and I click on this plus sign let's say high value uh, what's the higher value? So this is these are the states under Northeast. You have your region, your state, and all sales is highest when state is Gombe. All right, that's good. Oh, okay, it's highest when state is Gombe, and and then I guess it's lowest when state is Borno, right? Right, and then state we could say okay, do you know what? we also want? Um, let me pick uh, model name right so model name so for this state in particular what was the uh, lowest value so model name right and these are all the values for products yeah, I'm zooming in and out with my mouse this is me zooming in and out and then I can go put something else there so zoom in and out and of course it's all cross highlight and you could cross highlight stuff have this here and then you use it to kind of cross highlight other things as well you click on this this decomposes that this decomposes that this is really good I mean this is super super good Gombe had the highest and these are all the percentage sales for all the rest uh, go play with this it's beautiful really beautiful uh, I guess um, anyone in HR would think you could create an organogram with this it looks like an organogram right so that was December right so guys we've gone through 10 plus 1 bonus right 11 or let's say 10 we left one month out so it's 10 so it's really 10 those are our 10 10 best 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 visuals so please go online go to our online go www.officetraininghub.com you see lots of trainings there we're developing training free trainings for power bi free training for power apps and stuff that we're going to be loading onto this website very soon there's a free excel training there right now so go to www.officetraininghub.com go enjoy that and if you also want to learn a lot about power bi we have a reporting and analytics of power bi course Go check it out, dbrownconsulting.net, and learn Power BI with us. Right, so this was a webinar from our monthly webinar series. This is our top 10 Power BI updates in 2019. And I'm David Brown, and I'm really glad to have kind of shared this with you. Please type in the comment below which was your best visual for the entire thing. What was your best? I think I, think I love the decomposition visual, but, uh, but there's so many so many more right i mean the decomposition tree then you have excel and power bi webinar series that's us meet us again every third thursday of the month from 9 a.m to 9 45 a.m any questions anyone want to type in the chat any questions you have just type it out in the chat you want to have the link to register for the webinars the link is there join the link there and if you want to register for our other webinars we have webinars in financial modeling and we also have live meetups every third Saturday of the month we're going to share the link as well there uh, third Saturdays of the month all right so thank you everybody for joining us for another D Brown consulting Power BI and Excel webinar series. This was a webinar on the top 10 Power BI updates in 2019. Great. See you again next month, same time. Hope you enjoy your break. And everybody's enjoying their break, of course. And we'll see you again next month. Thank you, guys. I'll just hang around a little bit on the chat and just chat with a few of you. And thank you. See you next month. Bye-bye.